Hi, I'm Kyra Limbaha, and today I'm gonna show you how I prepped and shot a short film with the Huawei Mate 30 Pro, and why that phone really disappointed me as a filmmaker. The Huawei Mate 30 Pro was released in Malaysia in October of 2019, retailing at approximately 3,700 ringgit or less depending on where you bought it and what deals were available, which in US dollars works out to under 900 bucks, so we're talking flagship phone prices. And about a month prior to recording this video, Huawei in Malaysia teamed up with a local production company to commission five local film directors to shoot a short film with the phone. One of the directors commissioned was my friend Gavin Yap, director of the awesome Revenge of the Pontiana, available on Netflix, and Take Me to Dinner, the first movie where I did the cinematography for another director. Now these commissions were to help launch the Huawei Film Awards, a short film competition where you could win up to 20,000 US dollars by shooting a short film on a Huawei device, as well as to promote their new Huawei Mate 30 Pro, whose main selling point is its video function. Now the phone comes equipped with four cameras, a main 40 megapixel wide angle super sensing camera, eight megapixel telephoto camera, a 3D depth sensing camera, and an ultra wide 40 megapixel cine camera. Now this cine camera is the main thing they've been touting and on paper, the claims sound really exciting. 4K video in either H.264 or H.265, a one over 1.54 inch sensor, ISOs up to 409,600, manual control of video, super slow-mo up to 7,680 frames per second, and a whole lot more. It almost sounds too good to be true. Yeah, you'll see. In the past, I've owned the Huawei P20 Pro, which is still hands down my favorite phone camera of all time for photography. I love taking photos with that phone. I love the black and white sensor on the phone. I thought that was a really good idea to combine that with the color sensor camera to create the final image. And the black and white photos were gorgeous. The video mode on the other hand was pretty crap in comparison and it was a shame. So going into this project with previous knowledge of a Huawei phone with Leica camera engineering, I was really looking forward to seeing how the camera worked out. Unfortunately, it didn't work out like I had hoped. Right off the bat, when Gavin passed me the phones a week before we planned to shoot, I started noticing some iffy things. Purely in photo mode, the photos didn't pop or have the sharpness and detail of my old Huawei P20 Pro. And as I played around with it some more, I found some other weird quirks. For example, the ultra-wide cine lens is supposed to have a 40 megapixel sensor. But when you switch to ultra-wide, you can only take a 10 megapixel photo. And the drop in quality is pretty noticeable. Then there's the telephoto lens. Now on the P20 Pro, the telephoto was the lens I used the least because that too was eight megapixels and looked noticeably grainy compared to the main camera, unless you were in really bright light. This phone's telephoto was no different. So far from a photo perspective, my old P20 Pro seemed tons better. But when I switched the video, that's when I was really disappointed. Thanks to very heavy processing on the phone for noise reduction, sharpening, stabilization, and God knows what else, the video mode not only looked overly saturated, but also very smudgy. And a lot of times motion would jitter for no obvious reason. Telephoto shots on video further accentuated the pixeliness of the 8 megapixel sensor. And slow motion shots would have heavy color fringing on the sides of the frames. And then there's the so-called pro functions in the camera app. Now for photos, the camera app's pro mode gives you control over all aspects. White balance, ISO, shutter speed, focusing, etc. Then you switch it over to video and the one function you have no control over is shutter speed. So in essence, you can't control the exposure at all in pro mode. Even if you set your ISO to the lowest setting, which is ISO 50, depending on how bright or dark it is, the shutter will continuously change based on how you've set your metering. All the pro function for video is really good for is locking white balance. There is, however, a way to lock exposure using the basic video mode of the app, which is to hold down on an area you want to focus and expose to, and then no matter where you point it, focus and exposure will be locked. Except that's not the most handiest way of locking exposure and focus. What if you want to expose based on a bright window and lock focus on a subject being backlit by that window in order to create a silhouette? And most must up of all, it only locks focus and exposure. What about white balance? Now, as you can imagine with all these gripes, I should skip the native camera app entirely and use something like Filmic Pro to shoot this short film, right? Right, except for one problem. 
there's no freaking Google Play Store on the phone thanks to the whole sanction between the US and China and Huawei. So no Google apps of any kind and no access to the Google Play Store apps. Thankfully, my old friend from back in the day, Adam Lobo, has a tech channel on YouTube and he posted a tutorial together with the files needed in order to install the Google Play Store, which was pretty simple and didn't take long. Using Filmic Pro, I tested the camera in different scenarios and found some more interesting quirks. For starters, in Filmic Pro, you can only access the regular camera and the telephoto lens, but not the ultra-wide angle lens. I have no idea why. You also can't access the lens stabilization in the app. Even in Filmic Pro, noise reduction and sharpening was still in full effect, but thankfully the Android version of Filmic Pro lets you switch those off, which was handy and showed a marked difference in resolution. Testing the camera in Filmic, the best ISO settings for me were between 50 to 400, with 50 being the cleanest. But when testing it outdoors at ISO 50, which required shutter speeds in the tens of thousands, there was a ton of noise and medium shadows, which was really disturbing. However, at proper film motion shutter speeds, there was hardly any noise. Knowing we'd have a bunch of shots outdoors, I knew we'd needed ND filters, but because the entire front of the phone is a screen using a clip-on lens would get in the way of some of the controls in Filmic Pro. So I made my own ND adapter for the phone. I simply took a cheap plastic case for a Mate 30 Pro, gaffer taped a 55mm to 77mm step-up ring because I happened to have a bunch spare, and it fit over the circle decently, and voila, I could use my existing 77mm variable ND filters with the phone. Another problem when using the phone with Filmic Pro was the autofocus was either super slow or unresponsive. But then again, the autofocus was pretty random with the phone's native camera app, so I guess it was to be expected. Apart from my makeshift ND case, I used a bunch of different accessories but wanted to keep things minimal, stuff that non-film industry folks could find or afford. I used my Manfrotto B-Free tripod and a small basic tripod for B-Camera. I had a bunch of phone tripod mounts to attach them, a little Edelkrone rip-off tilting base, two Yongnuo YN216 LED lights, two rechargeable small LED panels, one Aperture 527W LED panel, an LED bar light that I got at a street market, an IKEA lamp with a large LED bulb, some fairy lights, and a Godox SL60W LED COB light, which I guess is the fanciest light in the bunch, but also very cheap. In fact, I think it's cheaper than the Aperture 527. I only brought two light stands and some small clamps, and for moving shots, I had a Feiyu Tech Vlog Pocket Gimbal and a Ulanzi phone rig. The native phone app only records in 30p or 60p, but the final output had to be in 25p for this project. Thankfully, in Filmic Pro, I can change the frame rate, so I set it to 25p 4K and locked the shutter speed to 1 50th. Now, if Filmic Pro really can't access the ultra-wide cine lens, then we were shooting using the main camera that has a 27mm equivalent lens at f1.6. Because the aperture is locked and the sensor is quite big for a smartphone, there's actually quite shallow depth of field, and you want to get the focus locked on your subject right to get the sharpest image possible. For the most part, with all the gear I had, this setup worked fine. Outdoor shots looked nice and sharp with very little noise, thanks to the variable ND, and for indoor shots, because it had such a wide aperture of f1.6, we hardly ever went over ISO 400. There was some problem with my makeshift ND filter case thing, because some light would reflect inside and cause a glare if we were facing direct sunlight, but apart from that, it was fine. The only time we needed to pull out big lights was in a few of the scenes indoors, but really only in one location, because that was the only place we had space to use the light. The short film was called Chasing Santosham, and was about a sound engineer whose passion is to record his own music, but has to supplement his income with dull VO recording work, and was shot in mainly two locations and the exteriors of those locations. Now even though I've complained quite a bit about this phone, there is a joy in shooting with such a small device. Spaces you wouldn't ordinarily shoot in and setups you wouldn't have thought possible are now yours to play with because the camera is so tiny. For example, most of the short film is told in voiceover, but the one scene with dialogue is in a recording studio and VO booth as the main protagonist deals with the client's constant changes with the VO artist. Originally, the director Gavin thought he had booked the biggest studio in the place. Somehow, he had booked the smallest, which changed our shot strategy completely. But because we had two phones and they were tiny, we somehow managed to pull it off. The camera in the VO booth was practically against the wall, pointing up at the talent. Then, when we were shooting the clients in the studio and the protagonist as he dealt with them, I put one camera up on the speakers and the other camera was on my small tripod behind the protagonist's chair. There was a window with ambient daylight coming in, but all the lights in the room were tungsten. So we closed up the window, aimed the bulbs on the ceiling towards the talents, and supplemented that with the Yongnaos. I put both of the Young Noirs on a one light stand using a clamp because we had very little space. Finally, I placed my LED tube light on the desk pointing up to give him some fill. 
With this setup, myself and the sound man couldn't even be in the room whilst rolling because it was so small, but we managed to get the scene done very quickly in a tiny room. The final scene in the home studio was also tricky as it was an even smaller space, so we opted to go handheld using my Ulanzi rig. I preferred this to the gimbal as I'd be able to reach over with my thumb and rack focus manually. To light the room, I attached my IKEA lamp on the bookshelf as an overall white light fill, then used the two Yongnuo's with different color filters that came with them to add some color and saturation, and the fairy lights were spread around the desk to add a bit of pizzazz. I'd use the same Ulanzi rig for the scene where he's jamming with his band, and we lit that with the Godox and aperture lights to give an overall fill. There wasn't really much room to go overly creative, and we wanted things to look pretty natural during those scenes. Of course, as with any production, there were difficulties, and most of them came down to the damn phone. For some reason, the on button for the phone is very close to the center, which makes putting it on a gimbal and balancing it a bit tricky without accidentally switching off the phone. In some shots, even whilst using Filmic Pro, there would still be an auto white balance shift, and when we'd use two cameras, there'd be instances where... Even with both the settings the same, the colors look different. On one shot, when we were trying to set the camera for slow motion in Filmic Pro, the app crashed, and all the settings we had locked on the phone were reset. The few times we used the telephoto lens, the quality and sharpness drops very noticeably. And on the one time we had to use the native camera app because we really needed that ultra-wide lens, motion jittered weirdly. In order to have the most control over the images we could have, we shot in Filmix log mode, and I edited, colored, and sound mixed the short film in DaVinci Resolve Studio 16. And for the most part, there was plenty of room to play with the footage colors. Now, as much as I'm pleased and proud with how the short film turned out, I can't help but feel so disappointed about this phone, and I think a big part of that is the way it's marketed. As a phone for videography. Now, one could argue that the beauty settings and noise reduction and auto functions are designed for the average phone user. Someone who wants to vlog and post to social media. Maybe so, but even if you're a vlogger, I assume you want people to move the way people move, not jittery like an old Max headroom skin. My beloved P20 Pro was marketed as a camera for photographers, and it delivered. This does not. I don't understand why the video pro mode on the camera app doesn't give you actual manual control. In fact, I don't understand why the video mode on the camera app of any smartphone doesn't give you actual manual control. An app already exists that can do it. It's called Filmic Pro. It boggles my mind that you can't make your own version of it and put it in your phone. All work together and license with them. I don't know. And if you can't offer manual control and all these things that I'm talking about, then just don't market it as a phone with awesome video functions. It also confuses me because most of the reviews I've read about the camera on this phone have been incredibly positive, which makes me wonder if I'm expecting too much. I honestly don't think so because I've had experience with an older Huawei phone, and that phone took much better photos than this one with its fancy new technology. There's so much about the Mate 30 Pro that disappointed me. The false advertising of its video mode, the underwhelming photos, even the design. Why the hell did you remove the volume buttons? Two buttons that did their function well, and what do you replace it with? Tap the side of the screen, and the volume slider will pop up. It's ridiculous. I guess at the end of the day, it's disappointing to me because I was really hoping to be able to take videos with this phone the way I took photos with the P20 Pro. But even with my annoyances with the phone, I really enjoyed making the short film and shooting with the phone because it's something I've always wanted to do. The devices in our pockets, no matter whether they're entry-level or flagship phones, have so much potential for creativity. And everything I was doing to make the shots look decent were not thanks to the phone, but everything else. The apps used, knowing what the phone can and can't do, how we compose the shots and light the scenes. You know, if you look at it, the phone itself was simply used for its lens, sensor, screen, and storage. I'm pretty sure I could have shot the same thing with any Huawei, Samsung, Nokia, or iPhone for the past six years, as long as it had, at its bare minimum, the ability to shoot 1080 and Filmic Pro worked on them. And hopefully that's what you get out of this video, that with some planning and creativity, you don't need the best phone camera in the world to create content. Because as you can tell from my comments about this phone, I really don't think much of its camera. Thanks for watching everyone, I hope you enjoyed this video. I've added some links in the description to the short film itself, Chasing Shantosham, which for some reason is posted as unlisted on YouTube, so it's instead embedded on the page for the Huawei Film Awards. Which, if you're watching this before the deadline of 25th February 2020, you can enter to stand a chance to win 20,000 US dollars if you're based in the Asia Pacific region and have a Huawei phone to shoot on. Any Huawei, but apparently it has to be a Huawei. I've also added links to some of the equipment I used for those that are interested. Thanks for watching, and again, like, subscribe, what have you, do da do da day.